do 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 this is just another curb log but it's different do 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 not like any other curb log about peanuts because i've never done one about the peanuts but now i am i i just came up with that about five seconds ago you kind you kind of you kind of just trail off <laughs> There was a point where it sounded exactly like the song. <laughs> then you went on this weird, like, long tangent that just doesn't stop. This is well, welcome, welcome to Curblog. Not just you listening out there, to, but to my my humble guest that I'm touching inappropriately on the shoulder right now, and he's frowning about I'm it. Make, I'm making a Kermit the Frog <laughs> frown. More like the angry video game nerd. The like, felt on my neck up, is wrinkled. Up, upside down, y- you mouth. That, yeah. That it fucking sucks. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um. Please, as this is the first time you've been on, why don't you introduce, Hi. Your, introduce yourself? I'm Mike Ruwako. Yes. I'm an animator in Burbank. And yes. I, me and my friend, our friend Andrew Dickman, do a podcast called Animated Anarchy. Yes. I was going to get to that, but you're just jumping right in. I was more expecting you to talk about all the I'm going to show the next 30 minutes. You worked on. Well, I've worked on, I, uh, I worked on BoJack Horseman. I've worked on Wabbit, uh, most recently, the, the first season really fun yes and um back in the day you worked on other stuff also yeah but i don't like to bring those up fair enough (laughs) uh also now i'm going to embarrass you those of you who have seen the uh nintendo collabs on newgrounds back in the day uh michael also animated the uh, most of the retro game ones you did the ice climber segment i'm still surprised that i was able to pull off the game and watch one the game and watch one that's right uh uh the um the rob one duck hunts which was one of my favorites but those are like my first time ever really animating in flash yeah and now look at you you're that's now look your, at me. it's your bread and butter now i now i am the king and queen of fr- of, of, flash. Of, of, of flash friends yeah. friends you're good good i did it we're on a roll um so uh we went to go see the peanuts movie on Friday, last Friday. Yeah, well, this is going to be coming out on Saturday, the whatever day that last, is. Last, last Friday. Yeah, so two Fridays ago, we went to go see the Peanuts movie with a whole bunch of friends, and it was wonderful. Yes. And now I'm going to talk about Anime and Anarchy. Michael and Andrew Dickman uh, do a podcast called Animated Anarchy, where they review movies, mostly shitty ones. We try to mix it up. You try to, but it's mostly shitty movies, <laughs> so, such as... Uh, what was the, the fish one? Well, Help on the Fish was actually really good. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Well, then I'm wrong. Well, but we, we did, like, you know, Robert Dangerfield and uh, yeah. Jungle Book 2, and we just recently did Black Cauldron. Okay. So, crappy movies. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really selling this. Well, We're either way, it's very entertaining, and if you want to hear uh, two animation professionals talking about animated movies that may or may not suck, I apologize. Uh, go check them out. I will have a link to their stuff. Do you guys host them on YouTube at all? Any of the episodes? We started, Andrew just started putting them up on YouTube. And the okay. funniest thing is we, we just put up our first re- movie that we did. I guess it's further than the fact that we've done bad ones. First one we did was B-Movie. That's was right. So that's funny. right. And we, I, I got to, before we continue, I just have a really funny story to tell. So Andrew was like, we got, I'm, I'm going to start putting them up on YouTube. I'm like, that's really cool, dude. And he's like, well, I, we need, I need images for like a slideshow because I can't just show our picture and the logo of the of the podcast on there, we should probably get some screen caps from the movie and play them. He's like, where should I find them? So I found a web we found a website that has high res screen caps of Disney movies and DreamWorks movies and all this stuff. Yeah. So we found B movie and the thing about whoever did these is that they're high res. Like if you open them, they blow up their they could fill up your whole screen two yeah. times fold. It's yeah, every every pore on uh, Jerry Seinfeld B's, B's face. face. <laughs> and um, the great thing is, I guess. The, the program that the person used, they take a screen cap of the movie every three seconds. So you end up with like a lot of really bad motion blur, a really bad in-between frames. So we just found the most out-of-context weird frames. And if you go on YouTube uh, and find the B-Movie Animated Anarchy episode and just watch and just and, or listen to, the, listen to the show, but then if you go back and look at the slideshow, you'll find them, like yeah, just a creepy stuff. CG Ray Liotta looking directly <laughs> at the camera with a toothy grin mouth. Um, B-movie is horrifying. Yeah, it's pretty horrifying. <laughs> especially up close in HD. In fact, that like now that we, everyone has HD TVs and you watch it and you're like, oh my God, that looks so ugly even in an ultra real detail. 
you could see like pixels on the on the edges of people's eyelashes. They're they're hosted on Andrew's YouTube channel, right? They're on Andrew's YouTube okay, channel. Okay, so go to so I'll have a link to that in the, in the in a connotation somewhere in the description as well. So if you, you want to go uh, look at awful weird screen caps of B movie and also listen to two animation professionals talking about various animated movies, go check that out because uh, you guys just did an episode about it. About the Peanuts movie yes. on your podcast, so yes. I don't want to re- make you repeat and an hour's was, worth of information. What happened was, um, Chris, uh, this isn't true. Uh, Chris heard it and was like, "You guys, that was great. Can you um, actually talk about the movie? Can you can you do it? <laughs> Could you do that again, but on my channel?" And so I was like, "Okay." And I didn't even realize that you were already doing the the episode. Yeah, because you so. asked me to do it, and I was like, like the day he was, it was coming it was over. Literally, no, it was literally the day I was going to go over to Andrews to record. And Chris messages me and says, "Hey, you want to do? Uh, you want to uh, pop on the uh, my, one of my curb blogs and we can talk about the Peanuts movie?" And I'm like, "I'm I'm just about to record <laughs> a show about the Peanuts movie." And this is three days after that. Not even, I think. Not even. So, so now no, you have to was, talk about it, was, it again. It was within like a day and a half of us seeing the movie, <laughs> and then he messaged me, and I'm literally going to be packing up my bags to go up to not my bags, but packing up my stuff to go up to Andrew's place, which is like a you know far enough away that I got to pack a bag, and then I got and then I we recorded and uh, the show and posted it, so it's on there, so you can listen to it after you listen to this. Yes, please go check that out. But in the meantime, now that we're six minutes and haven't talked about the movie yet. Uh, oh, no wonder that guy gave us a bad review. Yes, barely even got to the, the subject. Thing. When are they going to talk about? When are they going to get to the 15, fireworks 15, factory? Fifteen minutes in, they're not even talking about the fucking movie yet. Shit. Um, right, and now his six minutes. You can curse. I don't fucking care. I'm sorry. I try, um, I try not to curse so much. So, so first of all, let's continue to not talk about the movie yet. What is your experience growing up with peanuts in general i was raised on charlie brown and snoopy me and my i mean i said it on the podcast but me and my older sister would watch it every christmas we'd watch the charlie brown christmas mm-hmm. we'd watch the 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 halloween special we'd watch the uh Chris, you know the, the thanksgiving special which was my favorite you know easter beagle all that stuff and then i loved the comics ever since i was a kid it was probably my first drawing inspiration was peanuts then you know I had the you know I had the books I had the comics I had the movies I mm-hmm. uh, watched them all the time and I'm a huge Charlie Brown fan and they did this one this movie which I was I had a little trepidation with at first because when I first heard about it I'm like really CG with peanuts really and then I'm so glad that my expectations were completely blown oh yeah I mean I saw just in the trailers alone for the movie I was like I am going to run to this theater. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. I Yeah, no, well, I mean, I guess we're skipping ahead a little bit, but I mean, like, yeah, I, I was, I've been, you've been excited for this movie, you said for like, what, a year and a half you were, you yeah, were about a year and a half, even close to, actually almost two years this, this month. Yeah, and, and I remember when I saw the first trailer, I was like, I'm seeing this day one, I don't even care, like, I, I, because, what, what I was going to say regarding my stuff, I wasn't like a huge, like hardcore Peanuts fan, but I did grow up with like generally all the same kind of stuff. You know, all, Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon would play the, the holiday specials. I've seen most of the movies except for Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, which I'm going to watch because I, I I've always wanted to see that one, weirdly. Um, but I, I do love the characters. I, you know, it's when you grow up in America, they're just like kind of part of your culture. So I know all the characters and I, and I you know, I'm, I'm into it enough that's just a general consumer. But weirdly, as someone who's who wasn't like a like a really hardcore fan of the comics or the show or any of the movies or anything, when that first trailer came out, and I think we were even a little still like, oh, they got like the pop songs or whatever in there, I was still just like, I want to see this. This this something about this, I have a really really good feeling that this is going to be good, and yeah, it more than blew away expectations. It was this was a fantastic movie. Yeah, it's great. Like I I mean I I mean. I think the great thing about it is that first of all, it's faithful to the original source material entirely, yeah. and it's one. It's great for people who have uh, loved and re- were raised on uh, peanuts, and also it's good for people who have probably never ever. I would say if you have never ever seen a peanuts special or, or movie, cartoon or of any cartoon kind, or yeah. even the comic, yeah. And if you just went to this movie, I think kids would enjoy it. Oh, completely. Yeah, it's super... It, it's just... It gets down to the basic idea of what it is. It, it's a super relatable, kind of pessimistic, but in like a still a very relatable way. Like, well, it's not even pessimistic. A bunch of kids. It's more realist. It's called... It's it's more like... Well, Charlie Brown is a, is a loser. And everybody... I mean, 
these children, they're probably anywhere between eight and ten years old. Yeah. They're or younger. They're really a little old. wise, a little too wise beyond their years. And they all, I think, need to lose weight because they all have the same body type. <laughs> I mean, Scott Pilgrim, maybe, like, everybody's, yeah, some people, they say they have same face. No one ever complains that Peanuts characters have the same <laughs> body syndrome. Peppermint Patty has the same exact body as Charlie Brown. has the same exact body as Sally. That's kind of creepy when you think about it. All well, Sally's supposed to be younger, too, isn't she? Yeah, they all, they they all have the sister. same. They're, they're pretty, pretty much just triangles. It's a little weird, but... Um, so to start off with, uh, one of the things I was very excited about this movie for when it was getting very close to coming out is pretty much unlike, as far as I can think of, any other animated movie in theaters right now or just that's been in theaters for maybe even ever as far as I know, no celebrities, no stupid marketing gimmicks. Like they had the Target commercial or whatever, but it's like whatever. You know, at worst it has the the, the couple pop songs in there, but I, I didn't really find them intrusive. I didn't, they weren't like, oh, this is totally taking me. It wasn't like uh, in Wreck-It Ralph, which I, I love Wreck-It Ralph to death, but that's the only scene in the movie shut up and drive. that I think is the stupidest part shut, of the Yeah, movie. the shut up and drive thing. It's like, oh, don't do that. This movie has a couple songs in there, but it's not like Rihanna for one thing. Yeah. It's, it's like when they have the the bumbalea for that, which is just a gag. Yeah. And then that, that other, I can't remember well, I like it's called. about you. Is that in it? It's in it, but oh. very, but the thing is with this movie, they, they keep the music kind of, it, the music takes a backseat. Yeah. It's, it doesn't, it's not like obnoxious. Yeah. So it doesn't, I mean, I it. spent, we, I spent an hour and a half with Andrew just gushing about the movie. And for me, there's so many things about that movie. The fact that they use the original Vince Guaraldi recordings for some of the audio tracks. The fact that they use Bill Melendez's archival recordings for Snoopy. Yeah, and, stuff. yeah. and they still, they still, they still hold up. They're the, cute. They're funny. The fact that they shot the dog fight scene and they never, ever, ever, ever show the bottom of Snoopy's doghouse. <laughs> I think that is like they filmed because I love dog fights. The yeah. idea of an old World War One dog fight is still appealing to me, probably because of Peanuts. Yeah. But then seeing that. Dogfight, and it feels like a true dog, like a, a great movie dogfight scene. Yeah, and you don't see the bottom of the dog out, and you also so still like don't see the Red Baron. Never, you never, you never, never once. Yeah, but yeah, if you go online, you can find the picture of a Red Baron somewhere. I'll, uh, I, I do want to keep it like relatively spoiler free, but but I want anybody listening to this who hasn't seen it to absolutely go see it because it's you will thank me. Uh, we'll get into the further nitty gritty of it. I, I also wanted to say uh, at this stage too. Um, everybody knows I'm a giant nerd for voiceover stuff, but even people I know who like don't know like shit or care about anything to do with voice performers, the voice performances in this movie have been like a highlight for everybody I've talked to about it so far. Uh, the kids that they got, the I don't even know how many like like twelve to fifteen different kids, kid yeah. actors, so good. So adorable, and they match, so they, real. And they match yeah. the original voices of the completely. The, almost it, whoever did whoever was in charge of casting get get a fucking medal. <laughs> they have a casting director award. Yeah, give it to her My or God. him because it was absolutely brilliant how well the how well that movie was cast. And and again, like other than I I think um, one of them who I won't spoil. But one of them, I think, is like you were saying, one of the kids who does like the Disney. Special she works. TV she's kind she's of stuff. she's probably on one of those like uh, uh, Disney Channel sitcom shows. Yeah, and that that's fine. I'm I'm. But other than I can, that, I can all the that. names are. I mean, if you go to the if you go to their Wikipedia, you, or any of their places, like their their names are red. Like yeah. they're 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 in red, which means that there is no Wikipedia yeah. page for them. They're just they're, or even they're unknown yeah. to new kids. Or, or on IMDb, they have like maybe like one or two other like minor like commercials or things like that or whatever. Because usually kids like that would be like they would have done before and maybe like a Welch's grape juice commercial <laughs> or something. like that. I mean, that they might have for all we know, but uh, but yeah, no, they they're all fantastic. Like they they really they painted this world with, with like the realism that it needed. Cause like, I mean, cause, cause every single peanuts animated thing, it's always been kid actors every single time. Yeah. Um, and obviously they've been through like multiple, each of like every single, it's like with, you know, every Sonic character has had at least like three different actors that have performed him. Every peanuts character has had at least like five. I think, I think there's like five <laughs> or six voices for Charlie Brown. Yeah. Just him by alone. alone. Yeah. And some kids would get too old playing one. So they just, Put him on another character. Uh, yeah, I would bet like maybe Sally's actress like would then go on to play like I don't know like Lucy or Marcy or, or something. Patty yeah, or something. Uh, which by the way, Peppermint Patty's 
kid in this movie was my favorite. She was she was so funny. I thought whoever did Sally was just the voice. Oh, her was too. So adorable. Yeah, <laughs> so she got like Sally uh, Charlie Brown's little brother has a lot of like sister. really. So, wow. Jesus Christ, little sister. <laughs> Sorry, a very uh, a very forward thinking yes, little brother. Yes. <laughs> um uh uh she she had a lot of like really funny like I don't want to say like fourth wall breaking moments but like she was the most like out there kind of character I feel like in in the whole well, movie. Well no, well, the thing is she it's common for her because the thing is she's a young girl but she's kind of not wise beyond her years but very she's very enterprising. Like, yeah, she's very, <laughs> like I remember one of my favorite moments in any of the peanut specials is in the Christmas special. Uh she asks Charlie Brown, "Big brother, can you help me write a letter to Santa?" And he goes, "Sure." And she's like uh, and he, she, what did she say? She said something along the lines of like, uh, "I don't want presents this year. I just want cash." Preferably, <laughs> preferably in tens and twenties. Preferably in, right. te- in tens and twenties. And Charlie Brown's like tens and twenties. Oh, and he runs away. And she's like, "I just wanted my fair share." Just What's the matter? That. Oh my god! What was that? Was that one of the movies? It was, was that, the, was that, that was the, the Christmas movie. special. That's right. That's right. Um, because on that, they didn't have that in there. But on that same note, this movie had like. So many like references to a lot of like the classic yeah. like things about our, all the Charlie Brown specials. They, I mean, you know, this isn't spoiler territory, but they had like you know, no dog, no dogs allowed, like mixed in there. They had a lot of the catchphrases like uh, Peppermint Patty referring to um, Chuck. S- s- well, no, well, yes, that and also Snoopy's uh, persona, jo- Joe Cool or whatever. Yes. Who's yeah. the kid with the big with nose? the big no- that cool kid with the big nose? Yeah, I was like, oh, that's right. That was the one. That was the one. That, Complaint that I heard about one of the few complaints I heard about the movie was someone said you broke the illusion. Uh, Peppermint Patty always thought that Snoopy was a person, not a dog. Did and she early, refer to him earlier in the movie? Dog? She's like, your dog, your dog is weird, Charlie Brown. She said something like that. Yeah, but I guess in this movie it doesn't bother me at all. In this movie, it's the fact that he is disguised as Joe Cool. Yeah, he puts on many disguises normally, uh, Snoopy. Uh, so she just gets she's so dim witted that she just thinks that. Snoopy in disguise. He's not even wearing disguise. He's always wearing his sunglasses and a shirt that say Joe Cool on. Yeah. Like, Who's the kid with the big nose? Yeah. <laughs> Which is really, it's funny because it really explains, and also, I mean, you see Peppermint Patty, she falls asleep in class. She's, she she gets the names of books wrong. Yeah. Like, Which it, that's that's a great, I want, that, that gag needs to just, you have to see it. I don't even gag. know, I, that specific gag, you'll see it when you, you'll you'll hear it and look and see it when you see the movie. If you do, see, I, we recommend please, you see Please go see it, seriously. Please, I want this movie to make bank so they can make more movies. Oh, like we'll get this. yeah, we'll get to that for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully not like another Garfield movie. Uh, but uh, they, um, I don't even remember that gag that that the, the the book name gag or the author gag. Yeah, being in any of the comics or in it was just movie. funny. It just it was so perfect for her character because yeah. she is that like I I play sports. I'm not book smart kind of character. Yeah. yeah. What and we're I saying love... is Peppermint Patty needs to star in the next one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I, the fact. I, I, <laughs> I and I love how they just sort of they 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 had there was a good a very good mix between centering the movie on Charlie Brown. And then going into and and, and and Snoopy's story, or his ta- his whatever he does in the movie almost plays alongside and intertwines yeah. with Charlie Brown's. And then and the thing is, I had trepidation going into this movie because, yeah, Blue Sky who did the movie they don't really have a very good track record in terms of decent storytelling in their movies, except maybe since maybe the first Ice Age. The movie, first Ice Age, and that was like, like yeah. almost fifteen years ago. Yeah. I I mean I know I know like some people that do like Rio. I haven't seen it, so I can't. Yeah, I know a bunch of people that like Rio. I think it, it's okay. Mostly John but, and Nicole. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, birds. but I I I uh, there's things. I mean, the, the movies are sometimes hit and miss, and, the, and they're very episodic in nature. Even something that's supposed to be like a very linear story, there's always little set piece moments. But in Peanuts, it kind of works because you it's always fun to kind of like you see what Charlie Brown is up to, then you go see what Sally is up to with Linus, and then you go see what Schroeder and Lucy are doing, or Peppermint Patty and Marcy and Snoopy, and you cut around, and this, I feel like each character, even Franklin, who's such a token, really, and, and I don't mean this in a bad way, he is really the token he is, black. He guy. is what token black from South Park yeah. basically comes from. As right, as it's pretty much, it, 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 he is given some good li- he's given lines, he's actually given decent screen time on screen. It, 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 everybody, I think, gets their fresh air. Even characters that have never been used in like twenty or thirty years, because uh, like like there's Patty and Violet yeah. from the original. For they were from the which I, I had to re- to remind Steve Yurko who went with us that Patty and Peppermint Patty were separate characters because I remembered I don't know what what special or episode or movie it was or whatever, but there's some shot where it's like Patty and Peppermint Patty and they're being called on for roll call. 
and Patty's all like pleasant and nice and she's it's like Patty present Peppermint Patty yo and yeah. I'm like that's like just the juxtaposition between yeah. them but and then he's like and then Shermie who at one point I think he's he's dressed as a mime oh yeah because right. Shermie has like no personality <laughs> anymore now Pepper, characters like Peppermint Patty and Franklin and Schroeder are really in it yeah so it's it's really it's really funny how they they handle and really nice that they handle all these characters. I guess um, to, to kind of give paint a little bit of a picture too, because you were uh, implying before. If you guys don't even know like really like what the deal is with the movie, basically it's it it takes place over the span of about a full school year. But it it centers mostly during the winter time. Mo- then, yeah, for and the then most it, part, and then yeah. it goes into like the the, the spring months. Yeah, but, um, uh, but it, it it's like. Day, days in the life of, of mostly Charlie Brown, but like all of his class and everything. And what you're talking about with Snoopy is that he's uh, he's writing a story, and we see. I mean, because if you've seen the trailers, you've seen like you know the the girl dog character Fifi, and uh, you know the dog fights and all that. So basically, his whole like um, what he's imagining this this grand story that he's telling. Which I think is it is it Lucy who's doing the narration because she was reading it. I think right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and yeah, his story is basically sort of not quite paralleling but it's like it's inspired by the things that are happening in Snoopy the real world. Snoopy is seeing what Charlie Brown is doing or what's going on with Charlie Brown and he gets inspired and then he goes over his typewriter and writes the next chapter of his mm-hmm. story which I think is really really cute how they kind of combine all those things together into one and you know they, they integrate Woodstock and the the, uh, the little uh, bird scouts yeah which are his little uh, the, the, he, it's in, in the comics uh, Snoopy is sometimes a uh like a scout leader, and he yeah. has a bunch of Woodstock and and the, and the bird scouts, and they all go on little adventures. And, and they've been in the shows and movies and stuff. They've been too, in the right? shows, yeah. And, yeah, the, yeah. and I think, and, and not in the movies per se, but I know they've been in the in the comics and the, some of the shows. Mm-hmm. But um, just trying, just lots of great references yeah. to like all and, the classic stuff. Yeah, and th- there are sequences. There's there's a few of them, like three or four in this movie, where there are little sequences of two D animation, mm-hmm. and B J Crawford who animated those. It's it's hands down, and I was raised on the specials. The specials look nothing like Charles Schultz's drawings at all. Mm. It's the most on model, beautifully done animation, two D animation of those characters ever done of, of the peanuts and, and the, anything in the yeah. last sixty five years that the strip's been around. There's people they've they've been many times that they've been animated before. Mm. It's B J Crawford has, has literally made Charles Schultz's drawings come alive. He even replicated the squiggly Charles Schultz line. Yeah, which is like it it's kind of Ed, 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 Ed Nettie esque with like the sort of squiggle vision line art and all that. Yeah, but the thing bit. is, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Um, it's not super jittery, but like yeah, it, it, right. it has like breath it, to it. But yeah. the thing is about Charles Schultz's line is that it's so specifically it, to replicate something that it was in his hand because he was getting older and his hands were getting shaky. Yeah, it almost became mechanical and it's almost perfect if you look at an image of Charlie Brown or Snoopy. And it has that shaky line outside. It was done later, like the last twenty years of his life. Yeah, it's mati- it's almost it looks almost intentionally done, mm-hmm. but it's just because of his limitations of how he can draw. Yeah, and he they to replicate that so spot on. Yeah, no major was, major, and that was one guy. It was one animator one did all that. Guy, yeah. Like he he give him a fucking award. I hope he got. I hope they they. Sh- I mean, if they don't give an, I mean. It's weird. I'm gonna. Me and Andrew are probably gonna discuss this at one point, but we were, we're probably gonna look back at all the movies we saw, animated movies we saw this year, and decide because you know it's so weird. Oscar, it, I can't believe it. Oscar season is gonna be coming up again in like three months. It feels just like yesterday it was Oscar season. Yeah. So like I'm already in my head like, I want Peanuts movie to win because I have a personal. It's I'm biased. I love Peanuts, mm-hmm. but I do feel that like Inside Out is a better movie. Probably, but but that but not to like this movie's fault at all. Like it's 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 a very different movie, right? But but at the same time, it's also still very like, like okay, Inside Out was incredibly, it was very deep, but still very very uplifting. It had a great positive message, and this movie is I I maybe not quite as deep, but like it's it's so real, it's, it's so genuine. Rela- it's yeah, it's very genuine. It's so relatable. And it is uplifting, despite, yeah. you know, because Steve, I, I, hi Steve, we're referencing you a lot in this episode. Um, Steve Yurko described, like, the Charlie Brown kind of, like, loser personality as, like, it is, like, an air of pessimism. And he was kind of worried, like, I hope that this doesn't, like, take that away and make it too, like, everything works out or whatever. And that's not to, like, spoil the whole crux of the movie or whatever, but it's, like, it, it keeps that... 
it's still uplifting while not being like, and everybody gets what they want, and everything's great, and blah, blah, fucking blah. And right then the right. music starts, get up off of that thing, and they have a dance party <laughs> at the end. No. Uh, thank God not. Um, uh, on the note of, you're talking about BJ, uh, animation in general for the movie was oh, spectacular. Brilliant. I mean, the yeah. fact that I, I, heard, I read somewhere that Originally, I thought, oh, Peanuts movie. We'll be animating on twos and threes. We won't be doing full-blown animation. This will be easy. Eh. It's fucking difficult as hell to replicate that specific. Because you can only show Charlie Brown and Snoopy and all those characters from really only three or four angles. Yeah. You can't really do a middle drawing because then it doesn't really look like his work. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of but brilliant they how well... Because yeah. I think Blue Sky has the best... CG animators hands down of any studio in the country a animation wise animation yes, wise yes definitely yeah, yeah. for half these people who, have, who could do the most beautiful and they, right before the movie they played a scratch short mm -hmm. which shows their which was a, a pretty there's some pretty decent gags in it yeah. really great animation in it but that kind of animation is what they're best known for is this great uh, rubbery orga but organic uh, almost Looney Tunes-esque yeah animation. I was gonna say they're, they're kind of like the the theater's modern day like Warner Brothers animation, if anything, yeah. like they don't really do that. I mean, I made a comparison where like Pixar, while they're great movies and they're really good at doing like heartfelt scenes with pathos and all mm -hmm. that stuff, the animation really is nothing to really scream home about. Like, it's it's good, but it's it's it it, it the, the Pixar style is like its own very thing. It's very down to earth. Because like you know, di Good Dinosaur is now. We're gonna see that eventually too. But like Good Dinosaur, you can tell like from the trailers is like this is animated and, and is it's a Pixar movie. Yeah, to a T. And for I mean, if I if I saw the if I saw the trailer not knowing that it was being made by Pixar, I would have been like that looks like a Pixar movie, and mm -hmm. I would be right. Yeah, and um, and DreamWorks has their own style too. Yeah, with the but DreamWorks, the thing about DreamWorks is that at least they like have a person's artistic style drive most of a movie. Like Kung Fu Panda looks different than Madagascar, which looks different than How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, yeah, I can agree. Like at least they do that, and they're and they're they're a little more. They got a little more leeway. Then you get a, mo a studio like um, Sony, which can do a really amazing, loose, fun, cartoony animation like they did in Cloud, the Cloudy movies. Yeah, and, and Lone Star Pennsylvania, but it's also very graphic. It's mm -hmm. very, um, gra but but. Uh, Blue Sky can do really broad, fluid, crazy, cartoony, extreme animation, but still give it realism and, and make it feel like organic, like it's a living, breathing creature. Like they put extra, it almost feels like they're putting an extra detail into all their animation to make sure that it really does come alive. Yeah, the, the rendering, not like technologically, but like the just the general visual rendering of this whole movie it's it's it looks like a giant piece of really really cool artwork like just oh, in, in motion yeah it, i mean the thing is if you realistically render that stuff it doesn't it doesn't work. it doesn't work because you can't really because the thing about charles schultz is that he shaded his cartoons with black ink yeah so when you see those characters with hyper realistic detail or anything that's really detailed, it doesn't work. So the lighting is very specific and very graphic. The 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 the, sh the shading, the tone. If you shade it too much, it doesn't really look like Charlie Brown anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at any physical object or any toy. Like right now, I have a Snoopy phone right here. That's right. Yeah. It doesn't. I mean, it kind of looks like Snoopy. But if you go from certain angles, it doesn't look like Snoopy. It's more like the Macy's Day like parade. Right. Or it whatever. looks more like at he's one got angle, a little bit of the like the, the wavy mouth. If you look there. at it from one angle, it looks like one of the freaking Coca Cola polar bears on Christmas <laughs> time. Or he looks like a, a yeah. He just doesn't look like Snoopy anymore. So in this movie, they went out of their way to try to retain almost the the law of Schultz drawing. Well, the weird law, like I mean, I don't know if anybody knows this. You want to tell the story about? When they switch from one angle to another, because that's that's pretty funny. Oh, there's apparently I don't I, I heard this was a true story. I'm not sure if it's 100 percent true or if it's para, but I'm going to paraphrase it. Uh, when they were working on one of the specials, uh, one of the an, one of the animators went up to uh, Charles Schultz and went, "Hey, uh, Sparky, uh, I noticed a, a design flaw in Charlie Brown." And he's like, "What do you mean? What design flaw?" He's like, "Well, the problem is with Charlie Brown is that when you look at him from the front." His nose is right between his eyes. Yeah, so? But when he turns his head, his nose slides down like three inches down his face. His, his hair is... It, the, 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 curve, the curl switches from being downwards to upwards when he turns. It, 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 it defies logic. He's like, no, it's not. And, and, it's, and, and, he, and he didn't accept it. He's like, look, here, here's what you're going to do. 
draw Charlie Brown from the front and draw Charlie Brown from the side. Now try to draw the in between drawings. Animate uh, Charles. Animate. Like, and, he, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, I'll do it. I'll do it." And then they walk away and they go have a smoke or a beer. And about I think about an hour and a half later, he comes out and just looks at him, shaking his head like, "You guys." Like, just like, okay, okay, I get it. So, I mean, that's the great thing, though, is that these animators, even with something as meticulous, and the computer always wants to correct everything. Yeah. So, to, to go out of the way to, to break a character like that, to break a mold and have, like, okay, when Charlie Brown turns his head, his nose is going gonna, is gonna to pop and slide down two inches down his face. Yeah. Or his hair is going to do this. Or his body is going to change shape. And they and they still made all of those look... Because they didn't change any of the details of those characters. But, like, I remember, I think when you see uh, Sally from behind, you see, like, the, the bottom parts of, like, the, like the, her hair or whatever... And like it looks like realistically rendered, and it wor- I, but it's not weird. Like it works. Right. Like, all of the like, designs. It's so strange because well. I remember being like, okay, Charlie Brown looks all right because all we saw was Charlie Brown and Snoopy. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how the hell are they going to do Peppermint Patty's hair? <laughs> how are they going to do Pigpen with the smoke? Pigpen how, worked too. Yeah, how are yeah. they going to do Linus? And they actually pulled it off yeah. really well. And I would never it was never a moment. Well, yeah, Charlie Brown does have a giant pubic hair coming out of his forehead, but. <laughs> It, it, there's never a moment I hear my cat meowing. We have a, we have a cat in the background. Do you want do you want to let Maya out and have her be part of the episode? I could. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That's Let's okay. See. But she's gonna come in here. And she's gonna walk around. She's actually. That's fine. She watch. can she can have a good time with us. Maya. My, Mike just adopted a cat like earlier this week. I got a cat three days ago. Her name is Maya. She's only she's ten weeks old today. Happy 10th week birthday, Maya. She'll be in probably 11th week. Hi, Maya. 11 weeks by the time this comes out. She's on the other side of the room. She's just staring at me from the bathroom. We're talking about peanuts. What's a peanut? It's a peanut. Can I eat that? No. Kitty, you can't eat that. Doesn't even know what a peanut. Yeah. But anyway, um, story. We kind of talked a little bit about the story already, but like... The story really, it's it's just Charlie Brown and it's... Because, you know, in the comics, it's a little red-haired girl. Right, Kitty? Yeah, a real little... Yeah, you heard that. She likes a little red-haired girl. You heard right. So. Um, the little red haired girl is a new kid in class and um, Charlie Brown wants to impress her. Mm-hmm. As is yeah. as per the usual. Yeah. And and that that's kind of like the driving force of the movie overall. Yeah. I think people she, know. That's Charlie story, Brown yeah. tries many ways to so called impress uh, the little red haired girl. Who still doesn't have a name <laughs> after yeah. all these years, after after sixty yeah. something years she's still the it's little red haired. It's funny, if you look at if you look at um there's a point where you see a roster. Come on, Maya. Kitty. Come Maya. Join the review. Have a good time. <laughs> you just want to be annoying, don't you? Yeah. She just wants to take over the whole episode. She hasn't been in this room. Welcome to Kitty Kerblog. She's cute. She's so tiny. Yeah, she's about the size of a, a small loaf of bread. <laughs> um, but, um, oh, but um, if you look, there's a, there's a roster of students in the class. And you can see their last names and stuff. So like, That's know, right. Linus yeah. and Lucy Van Pelt. And then you see... Uh, Peppermint Patty, and I'm like, and you see, her name is Patricia. Roar, I forget the last name. I, yeah, I think she does have like a canon, like full name. Yeah, I'm remembering right. Well, all, all of the major characters do have full first and last names, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course, then I think there's there's already been stuff floating around. I think in one of them, there's still like, it, on the because there's a part where you see like all the names on the class, like on, on like a piece of paper on the wall, and I think that there's like some that are just the first name, and then there's some that are like there, there's just like a bunch of numbers. For one of them listed in there, and I was just like, what oh the yeah, there's a, char- there's, a, there's, a, there's a character who went by a very specific number. So it was like it was like a six digit number. I right? don't even I don't even it's know what weird. to do with that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean the story overall, like it's 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 simple, it's straightforward, it's fun. It it captures again that that sort of pessimism, and but it still manages to be uplifting and cool. Yeah, and the thing the thing that I like about it is that I I actually prefer movies that are more down to earth and almost slice of life. Yeah. Sometimes, and I and I've said this a million times before. Sometimes it's more interesting, or just as interesting. It, it's interesting, more interesting if not. Yeah, than that, than that. You can do it. They do. It's just as interesting, if not more so, to watch just how someone lives their life mm-hmm. than just seeing them going to a three act climax all that stuff oh yeah so and all that, that rigmarole. well going because they're going the, on a journey because I thought like oh my god the penis what's going to happen they're like oh no we have to find 
the magical Snoop, kite eating Snoopy tree. Snoopy ran away from home and we have to find him and oh god. Oh wait, we already did that. Oh gee, did they? Was that Snoopy comes Snoopy home? Snoopy comes home. Oh, okay. Snoopy just leaves home. Oh, he just goes out because he's like, ah, fuck it, whatever. No, well, there's a whole reason why he leaves home. I haven't, but, it's been a long time since I've seen it. But uh, we'll be, on that same note though, like, the, you know what, it reminds me of, I, I don't think I've ever said this on a curveball before. <laughs> I have this thing about Pixar movies where like, the, the Pixar movies generally have a very heartwarming, heartfelt story, but there's also some sort of element of each Pixar movie that's like cool that they, they do they do all like the marketing, the toys and all that stuff off of. Like Toy Story, it was about Woody, but all the like cool factor stuff like outside of the scope of the movie itself was the Buzz Lightyear stuff. Right. Um, and the same thing with like, um, I don't know, like, like Car. Well, Cars, it just kind of is that all the way through, even though like the movie had a real story to it, etc. Yeah. With this one, I feel like um, the more action-packed, like, whoa, like, spectacle kind of side of it is uh, the fantasy that Snoopy is imagining of the story that he's writing, because it's got the dog fights and the action and all the crazy shit going on and everything. Um, Maya is uh, very close to the microphone by this point. She's having a grand old time climbing up Mount Michael. Hi, Katie. Um, yeah. He's a cat. Um, did you know that you're a cat, Maya? Did you realize that? She's not quite ready to be picked up yet. She's no, still just, getting used I'm to that. Just to pet her, just to make sure that she knows him. Is there a cat character in Charlie Brown? Well, there was the cat next door that Snoopy always yelled at, and then the cat was like a monster. And there was one time where it just swiped and took out half of Snoopy's house. He is. <laughs> was that was that one of the movies? Or was that in the comics? It's in the comics, and they oh, did okay. they did a they did a uh, there used to be the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show, which was. One of the others, because that was an actual TV show yeah. with, with small little vignettes from the comics, mm-hmm. animated. Yeah. And they did a whole thing about the cat next door. Okay. So if you find it on YouTube, I assume. <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. I mentioned I, the scene I where, love those. Where'd you go? Um, so right, she's right there in front hey. of your face. There you go. <laughs> the cat has been grabbed. She's been captured. Um, okay, so now, later point. So, yeah, we want this movie to make bank. Which is why you should go see it. Go see the movie. Go see it twice. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Bring. Uh, bring and make, us, make it nice. Bring one of those pillows that have. Why do you want this movie to do so well? Because I would think that by see, by that some ex- some executives at movie studios are going to be like, oh look, look at this movie. Look how much money it's made. Um, let's. Uh, why don't we try making decent animated movies, like decent adaptations. Adaptations of comics. Like now yeah. we've I've already heard like. This honestly, and I've and I've said I, I I've said this on social media, and I'm saying it here for you guys now. Uh, this movie is probably in the since probably one of the original Peanuts movies because the original Peanuts movies were written by Charles Schultz. Oh, were they? Yeah. He oh, wrote, okay. He I didn't them. know that. And so there uh, were original stories he came up with specifically for the animation then. Yeah. Oh, and they, I, that, they, yeah, that's he cool. Wrote, he wrote them. And um, hi, oh, oh she's climbing she up on you. Yeah. Hey, I've not. I have a way with that. The viewers are gonna be like, "Why do they keep stopping talking to acknowledge?" Well, now I'm gonna have to see because I'm gonna draw me as Snoopy. I'm gonna draw you as Charlie Brown. So I'm gonna have to draw her as the cat from that thing. So I'm gonna have to look up. Because you never see the cat. Oh damn it! Well, then I'll just draw the window that Snoopy sees it out of. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. I know you weren't in the movie. Well, they should do the sequel about you. Because on that note. Yeah. uh, But oh, but uh, you know, this is probably the greatest comic book. Or comic strip adaptation movie ever done. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, Hands not down. that not that Garfield is much competition. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I already know that they're doing a new Smurfs movie. Sony's doing a new Smurfs movie, but they're like completely retconning. Yeah, the all live action, action ones. Of course. You are so vocal today. She's a, she's gonna be you a voice actress when more, she grows you up. You've been more vocal now than you've been in the last three days I've had you. She I wants, love you, Kate. She wants the attention. She wants. Um, it. I was thinking about this shortly after, and then she just goes away. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about this shortly after we went to go see it. Um, I actually don't think that I would mind if they made sequels. Uh, well, the thing about a, a sequel to the Peanuts movie is that it wouldn't be technically a true sequel. It would be a uh, just another story with Charlie Brown. Sure, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. would be fine. I would totally be up for that. It, but I don't know if they would call it the Peanuts movie too. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, could, I, well, because they could just have it be like, excuse me, Morty, um... Morty, they can, they can just do it with... with uh, I've just yeah. been affected now, you can see. Um, they, can, they can do... They, I mean, they, they can, can pick something else from the comic. Like, they can they can maybe even kind of use it's, one of the things from the old series and all movies. It's, it's like kind of... Yeah, a, I mean, they could call it, like, point. it's prepubescent ball, this Charlie Brown. Like, it could be, it could, and it could retain the Charlie Brown name, because it's always like, 
Um, it's something, something. It, it's, I got I to gotta tell you a story. Okay. Um, me and Andrew a few weeks ago, because we were we went out to lunch uh, before doing our, it was a, I think it was, yeah, it was before we recorded one of our shows, yeah. uh, our podcasts, and we were sitting down and we brought up the Peanuts movie. He's like, oh, the Peanuts movie only comes out in two months. I can't wait to see it. He goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, I remember one day I was working on BoJack and my me and my friend Aaron Long, uh, we were working one day, and we for the for about two hours, we were just coming up with the worst, just fake titles for peanut uh, specials. Were you tweeting some of them? Yeah, I tweeted. I remember those. Remember those? I remember, I remember those, what, yeah, what was yeah. one of them. Uh, um, uh, uh, my favorite one was probably is Pepsi okay, Charlie Brown. <laughs> um, uh, there's this there's this rag smell like chloroform, Charlie Brown. Jesus Christ, um, what's wrong with you? It's the Korean War, Charlie Brown. Uh, um, These are jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, You're a naughty kitty, Charlie. I think Brown. I think some of them we, we kind of went in weird territory. You're a dirty little girl, Charlie yeah. Brown. <laughs> You're a dirty Charlie Brown. Yes, I just did that. Except I put dirty little girl. It's it's euthanasia, Charlie Brown. Like anything would would be fine. Like I think the one that kind of was like the sh- not the straw that broke the camel's back. Where it's like, okay, I think we better stop before we move ahead. I think it was that's our word, Charlie Brown. Oh my God! Which I think Jesus I Christ think was, Almighty. Which would have been very, very, very wrong. But uh, I, we we did we were, we were laughing. I think one of them was um, um, your bed is wet, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Um, how see that, see how that, do you put a shirt on, Charlie Brown? The, the the wet one just makes me think of like that could actually have been one of the specials, and it's like, don't worry, kids. Sometimes people wet the bed. It's all right. right. Like like an actual thing from back. Then. Yeah, it's back to diapers, Charlie Brown. Oh my God Almighty! It would have been it would have been really really fun really funny uh, if they just. I mean, but the, I mean the worst one I remember I found I found out who was it. I think it was. Oh, was it Andrew? Let's pretend it was Andrew. I think it was Andrew because he said that he didn't really. I, no, he, I don't think it was Andrew. Someone said that they didn't really have a lot of peanut specials on as a kid, mm-hmm. like on video. All they had was the one "Why Charlie Brown Why," and I'm like, "You had that one? Which one was that? That's the cancer one." Oh my god! And I'm like, "That's the only peanut special you had was the cancer episode." Jesus Christ! Is that, that was a real thing. It was a real one. It was wow. Linus makes a friend, and sh- and that friend has cancer. Where are you now? Now that you're Where are you now, now, Charlie Brown? Where where the what cat's have, hiding what, in my room? What have we learned, Charlie Brown? <laughs> um, uh, life is short, Charlie Brown. Like you know, but anyway, moving on. Why, Charlie, oh, why Charlie Brown? Why? That's it's that's on amazing. YouTube. There's a whole scene when Linus freaks the hell out and yells at a person for for making fun of a girl with cancer. Well, there's a character that literally pulls off this girl's hat. Because she's wearing a hat because uh-huh. she had chemo and she lost her hair. Uh-huh. And he laughs at her for being bald. She and she's crying. crying. And Linus goes up and pretty much goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, he says the F word and everything. Yeah, he's fucking... Well, I need to go look that up now. Yeah. Are, 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 are any of the peanut specials on, like, Netflix or anything? I have no idea. I'm I doubt go, it. I'm going to go find out later. Well, I'm sure there's a bunch of them online somewhere, probably. Yeah, she wants yes, to see, she wants to see yeah, them online. I know, I know. I won't name any, any torrent sites. I, I know. She's very, anti-piracy. She's very progressive like that. She's, she's anti... Um, but yeah, no, I, I, you know what? I, I hope it does well. I really wanted to. I, you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll all go see it again at some yeah. point. I wouldn't mind. I mean, that. I wouldn't mind seeing it again. I want to give my money to... <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. Uh, <laughs> but, but I also, no, no, I, like, not, not just like, I definitely want to see more movies like this, but even just to be more specific, I think I really would be cool with if they did more Peanuts movies and just did other stories with these characters. Cause like these versions of them that they have right now are... I mean, well, they, they're not like they're yeah, the only problem, the only problem is that every right? every two movies they're just gonna have to replace the entire cast. Yeah, but I mean, they always have. That's true. So you know, I mean, you know, that casting director is gonna have to work pretty hard. <laughs> well, if they if another, they get we're an award, another then. peanuts movie. Um, but uh, Sally, Peppermint Patty, Marcy, Charlie Brown, Linus, Sal, uh, Linus, Lucy, Schroeder, Patty, and um, uh, all Shermie. Are now too old. Yes, they all have to be recast. What about so and so? They don't really get much screen time anyway. <laughs> Franklin, who cares? Moving oh on. God. Well, are we going to complain that Violet doesn't have a voice in this movie? Great, super. <laughs> hey man, it's some somebody top comes and be like, "Oh, Violet is my favorite character." I found that very particularly yeah. insulting. Oh, another thing I really loved about the movie, I just realized. Sure. I love how they use the Charlie Brown Christmas dances. 
Yes. In the dance scene. Yes. But then they obviously had more kids than they had in the special. Yeah. So they were probably like, I just imagine there was a, a con- I, no, I, I, I don't know if this is true, but I hope it's true. I hope there was like a contest at the studio where it's like, okay, in the original special, there's only five or six people dancing. Yeah. Um, All of which have been imitated like, by the cast of a pup named Now, Scooby-Doo. Now there's like 15 kids in this movie. Yeah. But we don't have dances for all of them. Um, you guys have to come up with some new Charlie Brown dances. And the ones that and they the came one, up with. There was one that I think... Andrew has a very... It's great going to the movies with Andrew. One, because he's just a really good, decent audience member who doesn't take out his freaking cell phone. Yeah. And like like that one woman in the theater just let her kid roam around. Oh, the yeah. We had one of those. I felt so bad for Mike. Our friend Mike was sitting right in front of me. And right in front of him was a woman who just brought in her daughter. Or her little While she girl. was on her phone the entire she time. She was on her phone, the and the thing is, we saw the movie in 3D, which also, the movie looks great. The movie looks great in 3D. Yes, fully, fully it worth looks, seeing It's, it's seeing worth seeing it, it, it Usually with 3D, after like 20 minutes, you're like, I'm used to this now. In the movie, it felt like you were in an actual like diorama. Yeah, It was sure. really, really cool. So, um, this, this, and when you, if, if you're in the theater, you're wearing these glasses... When a woman, is, this woman was shining her, she was looking like at Facebook, just yeah. killing time. Yeah. At 10 o'clock at night, it was a 10-10 showing, which means that it was probably 20 minutes of previews, and the movie started at 10.30. We didn't get out of the movie till about close to midnight. Yeah, I think so. So, we um, we were there in the theater, and that bright light coming from the screen detracts, it, 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 it almost it makes a glare on your glasses. So, it makes it really, really hard to see. Yeah. So it was kind of annoying. That was probably the one thing I really didn't like about going to see that movie was just this woman who obviously just didn't care, and her kid was just roaming around, climbing on screaming seats, for no screaming reason, for as no per reason. usual. Because she was probably like three years old or four, yeah. and uh, it was just absolutely uh, that was pretty uh, sucky. But yeah. I forget what were I talking about. Um, I think it was oh like, a- Andrew. Uh, oh Andrew. Yeah. The great thing about Andrew is that he has such an infectious laugh. That there was a moment where we were watching these dances, and you could tell that they were like, "We got to show people these dances." So you show the wide of the, of the auditorium where there's this dance. Yeah. Then you zoom in on the, some of the dancers, and you see like the classic Charlie Brown dances with a woman waving her hands and the guy walking in place and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and like like shifting his head. From and side then there to was side. this guy who was like doing this weird like he, he was like, like hunching he was, over. He was like, like doing like a crab spider walk or something. It was really weird. And I just hear Andrew has a very he just says like ha 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 ha. Like really, this really great laugh, and he's just like he's so it's so hearty and so yeah. like genuine that you can't help but be like, hi, Kitty. There are and she's she's climbing. She's having a good, she's old time. Having a good time. There's there's a there's a there's a few moments like that for this movie that really are just like unexpectedly great. burst out laughing yeah. out loud. There's funny. great visual jokes, great visual references, great um, lines of dialogue. Yeah, I mean, it's great, great, great. I mean, just like in our la- just like in our actual me and Andrew's podcast, it just is an hour of us just praising this movie yeah. and not really talking about it. I wish Andrew was here right now because I feel bad that he couldn't chime in again. Well, he's a piece of but, shit. I mean, I'm he's just kidding. Me. I love you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's what we do. Here's what you'll you'll we'll do say I don't know uh, another movie. We'll do the Good Dinosaur. Sure. Well, me and him will review the Good Dinosaur, and then you could just have Andrew on, and you guys could. Or, talk about that. or I don't know. Maybe I'll join you guys. I did an episode with them a while ago where, where you were out of town for a while. Oh and, yeah. And I did a, a Titan AE with Andrew, so that was one of the. I think that was like the third episode. That was one. I was so glad that you did it because I remember being away, and I and the joke was that I was only there for one week, and I I leave for one week, two weeks. And he's already replaced me with two other people. <laughs> and Rob Isaac did Rob the Rob Isaac did the Powerpuff Girls movie, which was a really great episode. And you guys and did movie. a really great episode. I love I love that you you called the um, that ain't the 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 Jereen Garofalo uh, character. Oh, what are you doing? You're in my marker box. <laughs> Come on. How did you get in there? Maya is the star of this curve log, clearly. Yeah. But um, you called it an angaroo. Angaroo. Oh yeah. Angry. <laughs> yeah. I think that one is up on YouTube. So definitely go watch. No, it's going to be up well. on YouTube probably in the next two or three weeks. But if you go on if you go online to Animated Anarchy Cast on Facebook or check iTunes, it's not iTunes. And on Give Pod, us a, Podbean is Podbean or Stitcher. They're all there. I know. I get it. We're almost done. There's going to be a lot of people who hate cats after this show. They're like, 
So that episode was great, except for the fact that you just keep hearing. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry guys, but if you've made it this far, clearly you don't care. So thank God. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I will. I will have a link to all that stuff. So, and do you want to plug your like Twitter? Tumblr, yeah, Tumblr, I, on thing? Twitter, I'm uh, at a guy who draws. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew is awd twit, but yes. sadly, I hope he gets it resolved. Apparently, his Twitter was hacked this week. I think it's been fixed by now. Okay, I hope so, so because it's that's a bummer uh, when you when you uh, yeah. Because the thing about uh, customer support for any website yeah. Most um, of them. It does not work. It's, it leads you right back to where you start. It's really bad. So I hope everything works out. But his Twitter is AWD Twit. Follow us on Facebook. That's probably the most direct way to contact us. Your, and your Tumblr is uh, Michael J. Rocco. That Tumblr? Yeah, Michael J. Rocco. And I but, also run the Animation Smears Tumblr. Yes, which you have not which, updated in ages by this point. Because I've just lost all control of control. I'm not control. I just, I, there's more important things in my life than That's true. going in and, and, and trying to queue through 2,000. Yes. Oh, we should, I should hook you up with some Dragon Ball Super pictures because there's lots of great in between. Oh, no, no, that, that's like the in between one, whatever, either yeah. way. I'm waiting for people, I'm waiting for the Peanuts movie to come out on DVD so that I'll just post a bunch of, um, a bunch of really amazing smears. smears and Sweet. multiples, mostly multiples. Another thing, too, is that uh, I don't mean to plug 15 million things. I don't care. Uh, oh, I worked right. on the show Wabbit, which is gonna, which is airing on Cartoon Network and Boomerang. Yes, it airs. I believe they changed the they changed the dates around. I think it's Thursdays at two p.m. But if you have the Cartoon Network app on your <laughs> iPad or your phone, you can watch them on there. Um, you can watch them, and you can catch them. They're really, and you can catch them at different times of the day on Cartoon Network. I boarded about 12 episodes this season, mm-hmm. so make sure to check those out. You can look his episodes up on YouTube. It also features, as I found out a little while ago, uh, Matt Mercer is the voice of the Bigfoot character. Yeah. So those of you who are... pretty much, and, and my, my opinion of him is that he's the Canadian gossamer. Yeah. <laughs> that he's just like gossamer's weird north-of-the-border cousin. Yeah. And he's just, ow, you have claws in your leg. <laughs> she's going gonna, she's gonna to be a mountain-climbing voice actor cat. Uh, yes, go check that out. Uh, I think you can also watch them on the Cartoon Network website. I think they've got a few episodes up on there as well. Yeah. Uh, that's going to wrap us up. So in the comments below, uh, if you have seen the Peanuts movie, please uh, leave any thoughts and recommendations about it. Maybe don't get too spoilerific if uh, anybody happens to come across anything they don't want to see. Uh, and also, if you have not seen it yet, uh, share any thoughts or memories or anything like that about uh, Peanuts. The, the Peanuts in general. Like, Did you grow up with any particular... Favorite specials or movies? Did you read the comics? Anything like that? And uh, otherwise, if you have not gone to see the Peanuts movie, please go see it. We highly, highly recommend it, and you will, uh, I think that you will greatly enjoy it. So yeah. that's it, Michael. Thank you. For thank you so me. much for coming over to my house my, my, and invading your space and but, playing with but your Maya cat. But Maya now loves you. But so Maya. Okay. But, but, but Maya. And Maya, thank you for Maya, joining us and say, being all noisy. Say hello. Say goodbye. Yeah. She's got to jump on the floor. Now you don't. Now you don't yeah. talk. Yep. Now that you're so, on my lap, yeah. and we're saying goodbye. Put, put me on the spot. Fine. Let me do this. If I squeeze your tail, no, I'm not gonna don't do that. Don't do that. I love animal you. abuse. Filing. How dare you? I'm gonna write a Tumblr essay oh, no. about you. What's at the door? Who is it? Peta. Oops. All right. Cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming by. This was fun. Good night, Flux. Good night. <laughs>